Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Big tit energy, BTE. So what is big tit energy? You've likely heard of big dick energy, BDE for short, when a man gives off an aura of confidence, power, masculinity, a take charge attitude that's very magnetic and alluring. He might literally have a huge dick or he might not. BDE is more of an attitude and not necessarily a size. So let's talk about big tit energy or BTE, which is the equivalent of BDE. This is when a woman radiates sexual power. She has a give no fucks attitude. She's confident, unapologetic, in your face, full of joy, passion, and vitality. Her life force is pouring forth, gushing with creativity, not concerned with pleasing other people, and not concerned with being polite. She's sensual and sexy and has charisma and radiance that is felt by those around her. And even from those across the room, the parking lot or the street. That's big T-E right right there. Without ever having seen her tits, people will respond to this energy. So this is also the expression of being a well-fucked woman. Someone who has such deep, unshakable self-confidence and self-love that it supersedes her appearance. This is a tangible energy that reaches out and makes itself known before you even see her physique. One of the areas we focus on in my work and my salons with women is reconnecting to and falling back in love with all of their body parts. When women's bodies become projector screens for other people, they often dissociate from this. And so this could be anything like the stomach, thighs, butt, vulva, and of course the breasts. Some women make it through life loving their breasts, but not many women do. There is so much stuff projected on them that they become more of a publicly owned commodity, a sales prop, and a titillation device that women rarely ever feel a sense of empowerment from their breasts or like they really own them. And that's why it can feel so easy to cut them up and to dissociate from them to the point where they are so cut off from the body they literally get cut off in surgeries. Some women go through life feeling inadequate because they're too small, or they feel shy and reserved because they have naturally large breasts, which attract a lot of attention. And that then puts you in the category of asking for it, and you better hide all that voluptuousness. So they hunch over and disown the breasts and all of their magical powers, which we'll talk about shortly. So it's a hard battle to win. And then, of course, you have the ever-growing population of frankentits, and I alluded to one of these people at the beginning of the podcast. So these are women who had smaller breasts, and they bought larger ones at the titty store, and now they want everyone to look at their titties. They practically knock you over with their rock-hard cantaloupe caricature tits. And you know, (laughs) when a woman tries to make a joke, like they're like, um, my eyes are up here, because of women staring at their chest. Well, these women are actually like, don't look at my eyes, look at my tits. I paid a lot of money and I'm hoping to get your validation, so please look at my tits. Stop looking at my eyes. Why do you think I'm wearing this one-inch bikini? Jeez, man, I fucking want you to look at my tits. So, yeah, so then you have people like that. So is this really BTE? Is this really what it looks like to own and love yourself? Can this really be bought? No fucking way. What's really hot is a woman who owns and loves what she's got, not what she's bought. You can have A-cut breasts and still have that big tit energy. In Taoist sexual thinking, the breasts are an extension of the heart. When the heart is open and free-flowing, when you are living at an existence that is trusting in the world, your chest will swell with radiance. You bloom. Your guard is down. Your energy is light and bright and magnetic and attractive because 
because you are open. Openness is incredibly attractive. You don't even need to flirt when you're open, meaning you don't have to try hard to be sexy and witty. You are just being and basking in yourself, and that is the most attractive thing. So I know this might sound like the kind of tired self-love, live your dream stuff you hear all over the place, but I'm talking about a tangible quality of wholeness, of acceptance of the self, which then translates into an acceptance of others. So your openness to life and the world is this delicious, seductive thing. It's totally magnetic. Everybody wants to be with you and near you and listen to you and to whatever you say. So how do you get your breasts back? As in, how do you reclaim them if you've dissociated from them? How do you cultivate big tit energy from within? You don't need to buy it or them. You can make it and them yourself. So the first thing I would say is a conscious reconnection to the breasts. So you take them back. You own what you've got and you can even grow what you've got naturally. One of the best ways to do this is through self-breast massage, spending time every day, even just five minutes a day, massaging your breasts. Most breasts spend their days bound up in suffocating (laughs) contraptions, again, mainly for the purpose of other people to either seemingly make them look perkier or to stop people from salivating and car crashing at the sight of a nipple. So free them. Go bralas more often. Bras are the burkas of the breasts. And massage your breasts. I have a great free breast massage video on YouTube you can check out. And in my salons, I teach a daily comprehensive routine for breast massage for women. I show you how to release tension, open up lymph flow, and activate the breasts and their big tit energy. So you can find this in my vaginal kung fu salon and in the Well Fucked Woman salon. The second thing to do would be to fire up your sexual energy. What I see over and over again in my work in my salons is whenever people have a disconnect with the breasts, so let's say they're too big, too small, not perky enough, if we fire up their sexual energy, so that means we get their energy flowing through the body so they begin to wear it and radiate it, then that energy shows up in every part of them, in their faces, their auras, and even their breasts. I have seen countless women breasts grow. They get larger, fuller, firmer, and even more lifted. Yep, because now they are filled with all of this beautiful, luscious, potent sexual energy. And also because now they own all these parts of themselves, including their breasts. Part of this is loving and accepting them. And the other part of it is daring to truly wear them in the world and not feel like they are a body part that belongs to somebody else or is for the satisfaction of somebody else or is going to incur the judgment of somebody else. Well, you know, your worth and your breast's worth is up to you. It's not contingent upon somebody else's opinion of them. And like I said, I've seen women grow breasts, lift their breasts, and fall madly in love with their breasts. So the breasts are the great alchemical metabolizer, not just physically, but energetically. When you're in tune with them, when you love and you own them, whatever you've got, you unleash their power. So their, their, their purpose is to help you process the information and experiences of your life and turn it into gold. This is exactly physically the correlation with creating breast milk, right? This is the most potent substance that a human can eat. And so they take whatever is in the body and then they convert it into this magical um, Rita, this manna from heaven, right? The most powerful substance we can possibly have, which is a great reason why to breastfeed your baby and give them the best food they could ever eat. No comparison to formula. Absolutely not. So this is the true power and energetic purpose of your breasts is to take the dross and to alchemize it and turn it into gold from a physical perspective and an energetic one and even through toxins right the lymph in there filters through toxins and helps to release it in the body so the third thing would be is like looking at the breasts as a place to spend lots of time sexually so not just a quick nipple tweak on the way down to the promised land of the vagina no breasts are often thought of or or not even breasts i'd say nipples as a brief layover before you know continuing the journey down south so you can unleash the orgasmic potential of the breasts by extended periods of time play so there are several energy meridians running through the breasts 
six, in fact, and three of them are directly connected to the flow of sexual energy, including the kidney meridian. In Taoist thought, the breasts are thought to be the initiators of sexual arousal, and as I said, they are connected to the heart. So deep massage, loving touch, coupled with sexual energy opens up these energy meridians so that chi and even sexual chi can flow much more easily through the breasts to the reproductive organs and the whole body. Like I said, the breasts are like these alchemical cauldrons. So they take this energy, the sexual energy, the love of the heart, they mix it together, and then they spread it throughout the entire body. So these are power centers. They're very important in the whole sexual process. And like I said, they usually get overlooked, right? There's this cursory tweak, (laughs) a little bit of time spent, but you can spend... 15 minutes, half an hour, even an hour, I'm serious, on intense breast massage and stimulation and watch how you or your female partner wake up. It's incredible. So we know that women can have nipple gasms and it's even been shown that the nipples are connected to the clitoris and the vagina. And did you know that sexual activity grows breasts by 25%? Again, you're building up all of that energy in the body and that's where it shows up. So the issue, the big issue, and why I'm you know, poking fun, but it's a serious issue about women who cut through the breast tissue. So if you're getting a breast enhancement, and then you're inserting a foreign object into that area that has no place being in the human body, you fuck with these energy meridians. And you also create an interference field in an area responsible for sexual arousal. I don't think most women have any idea what they're doing and the ramifications this has for their libido their sex life, their ability to get aroused and orgasm and their overall health when they do this kind of thing. Frankly, I'd be surprised if women who've had breast surgeries would ever orgasm again. Maybe they could have clitoral orgasms, but I highly doubt they would ever have vaginal ones. Plus, the chances of developing autoimmune conditions from having implants are growing all the time. More and more women are coming forward and having explant surgeries to remove their toxic implants. And I'm sure that over the years, there wasn't such a strong connection made, like people were getting all kinds of conditions happening, but not making the relationship between having their breast surgery. And there was a woman I came across on Instagram and she highlighted her journey, Manifestation Babe. And she talks about how she was getting all these conditions and symptoms and how immediately when she took out her breast implants, everything changed. She went back to normal, like radical health change. So she documents her journey really well. It's a good thing to go check out if you're in that position considering where your mysterious health ailments might be coming from. They're coming from your tits if you've got fake ones. So the point is that when women think they are buying BTE, they're mostly buying a big sign that says, I don't have BTE, but I tried to buy some. You can generate your own once you reclaim and reconnect with your breasts, whatever size they are. So somebody else to check out is Sam Blackie. She's on Instagram, (laughs) B-L-A-C-K-Y. And I'm laughing because I'm remembering her tagline used to be big tits, comma, little eyebrows. When actually it's the opposite. She's got two itty bitty little nipples on her chest and virtually no breast tissue. And she has these giant bushy eyebrows. So she's a DJ and a model and she does a ton of swimsuit campaigns. And this is kind of surprising because despite working in an ocean of fake titties, I'd say that 98% of swimsuit models have implants. She's all about rocking what she's got and she gets tons of work. She seriously has BTE and some of the smallest, most non-existent breasts you've ever not seen. She wears lots of see-through tops, she goes topless a lot, and she's just super out there with what she's got. And it's such a refreshing change in a sea of frankentits. So she's at Sam Blackie on Instagram, S-A-M-B-L-A-C-K-Y. This isn't an endorsement for her lifestyle or her business or anything like that. I'm just endorsing her tits. So go check them out. Speaking of which, today we are talking to Natasha, who is a graduate of one of my salons, and she has some pretty amazing things to share about her experiences getting to know and fall back in love with her breasts. Well fucked, old stars! Welcome, Natasha. Thank you, Kim. 
So I would love for you to share your experiences with doing breast massage and reconnecting to your sexual energy and the effect that that had on your breasts and then the rest of your life. Well, I am so thankful to have been brought back to the attention of my breasts because early in my life I had large breasts and it was awkward for me and I would hide and cover my breast so much that I got a tan line on my arm from holding my my arms across my chest and hiding all summer long. Um, I was definitely not occupying my breast and um, it's, it's so sad like thinking back about how how long I spent that way and um, then reconnecting through the breast massage and um, occupying that space is so fantastic um, I I What's well, interesting, yes. I'm just going to jump in there because what you say, like often, yeah. you know, women think that it's women who have, or people think it's women who have small breasts who have a hard time really occupying and inhabiting their breasts. But it's also women with larger breasts who are gathering too much attention and they, you know, they don't feel like they can fully stand even erect and allow their breasts to just exist exactly. because of all the potential messages that they're sending out. And so, in that way, women in that side of the scale or spectrum are also having the similar issues of not being able to occupy and really own their breasts. Right. The grass is always greener. You know, everyone thinks that they want large breasts, but really we just need to own what we have and, and occupy that space. Yeah. So how did that so, shift for you? So uh, I stopped hiding and being scared and um, I felt so much more joy in general in life. After, and what was that a result um, of? After doing the breast massage and, and connecting and really owning that heart space. Um, yeah. And, and hope, and hope, because I had had, um, I came to your work after having a child and my son was four and I still had saggy boobs and I thought I was stuck. And anybody, everybody I knew that was a mother had saggy boobs. And I just, I didn't want that for myself. And I was so scared that that's what I was going to be stuck with. And I'm not, I'm not stuck with that. Um, and so I started the daily breast massage. It just in the shower or anytime I was changing my clothes, just do a few minutes of caring for myself and massaging my breast. And with it, I think it was like a month, I was noticing the skin is firming up. It wasn't that thin, crepey, floppy, fold in half boob that, <laughs> that I had um, previously. Um, and slowly over time, my breasts began to fill back out. And um, post nursing, I think I had dropped two cup sizes um, from prior to pregnancy. And then this brought me back to where I was. Um, and in, in a very much happier space about them. And I, I still have that happiness about my breast and I'm, I'm not covering and hunching and hiding with them. Right. And I think that, you know, there's this whole movement right now to really like accept exactly where your body's at. So some people might say, oh, why didn't you just accept your saggy boobs? But I feel like the sagginess, especially with women who've breastfed and had children, and I talk about this in my salon, so you probably remember that, but it's symptomatic usually of depletion, right? This essence and this energy of like giving out so much. And that literally shows up as a depleted breast, right? This saggy, lifeless kind of breast. And and so once you start to reconnect to that heart space, you own the breast, and then you start recirculating the sexual energy, they start to fill up, right? And then that joy is also, okay, I've retained this sort of shape now, but also that you're reconnecting to a body part that you're starting to dissociate from. And that dissociation reflects in the sag or the shrinkage of the breast. 
Absolutely. And I've, I've noticed um, in other areas where I'm starting to pay more attention to to myself and to my body, I'm really, I'm getting that healing and that restoration. You, you should accept yourself and to connect to yourself when you're in that space. Because disconnecting from yourself isn't going to, um, isn't going to help you. But it doesn't mean that you have to stay in that condition. You don't have to stay in the the lifeless, disconnected space that you're in. But owning it and realizing that's where you're at is a is a good start. But also realizing that that's not who you want to be anymore, and and taking the steps to change, um, it's fantastic. So as you begin take, to take this step, yeah. So as you began to reclaim your breasts, did you notice that you were different out in the world? Like, did you dress differently? Did you present differently? Were your shoulders like, you know, arched back in your chest? Oh, like, how absolutely. did you show up? I had, I had so much more confidence and willingness to take, um, take risks that I hadn't been willing to take before things that I had wanted to do, but was scared to do. So one thing that I had really wanted to do for years was take a belly dancing class. And I, I just did, and I jumped, and I, and I involved myself so heavily with this, and I, I loved it, and I had so much joy, and my shoulders were up and back, and my chest was forward, and it, and it was so complimentary to do the belly dancing with your work. Um, it works so much with core and um, pelvic mm. floor strength. Yeah. Um, so they were super complimentary. <laughs> um, and looking people in the eye um, when when you pass someone by, and I wasn't shying away. I just had so much more confidence, and it didn't matter what I used to think that person would have thought of me. I wasn't doing that math in my head of that judgment. What is this person thinking of me? Because I was just me and it, was this, it didn't matter. Was this all connected to your chest? Yeah, I, I, I really think it was. As having large breasts. I, oh yeah, there's so much hiding and, and so much shame that was with that. Um, the hunching and the covering and the weird, like the big baggy clothes that I would wear to kind of hide it. So what um, was your perception of what you were being judged for or people looking at you about, like what was going, what was the replay in your head about why you should cover up and why it was awkward for you? Um, my, my best summation would be that if I had, um, present myself in a more upright and um, free way or in a um, even dressed pretty even if it wasn't um, scandalous yeah. <laughs> that someone that someone would find me um, a whore basically and I and so much of my youth had been put on me that you don't want to be that and you don't want people to um, perceive of you that way even if it's not true. And just by having large breasts that you would be really accentuating yeah. that idea. Like here, <laughs> here I am, I'm a slut or I'm sexually available or just sexually out there just by whatever being, not even having like a skimpy low cut dress. And you know what I mean? That you just be like, whatever, not hiding them. <laughs> and that that right. in itself would be a message that you would have been, what you would have been sending. Right. I'm, I, I'm noticing more as an adult. I see it with my mother who, who hides in a, in a very similar way that she's just afraid to be seen as a woman. We live, our, our femininity is being kind of squished a little bit and we're taking on a lot of masculinity. So to be powerful, we need to look masculine and to kind of hide that, that feminine part of ourselves. And that is so feminine, the breast. So to kind of show that off, like, oh, who are you? <laughs> um, so I, I, I think it was just kind of hiding that, that feminine. And I would, even when I was younger and I was coming into um, having breasts, I would dress like a boy. Um, 
just so much more masculine and have short hair and I I've and now I have long wavy hair and I wear dresses and and show some cleavage sometimes and it is so much more free and and joyful than this scared hiding well absolutely yeah you just get to be yourself without (laughs) and that's what I find is so crazy is how much projection goes onto women's breasts right like how much of other people's ideas and thoughts are projected upon women's breasts that they don't even really have the opportunity to just enjoy and own their own breasts and it it's not only the projection it we take that on yeah we can we can choose to not take that on and to not pass that on to the women around us and to our daughters and nieces and um free our mothers from from this space and this burden that we've taken on well one of the things that you've probably heard me talk about is that in the journey to becoming a well-fucked woman and by to define that i mean as a woman who's in touch with and confident in and inhabits her sexual energy and to the point where she begins to wear it she begins to radiate this energy of magnetism and beauty and vitality that's coming from the inside and one of what i often say that one of the hallmarks when a woman knows that she's really reached that that threshold of in, into well fuckedness is that she starts to not give a shit what people think about her so she wears what she wants she looks how she wants puts the kind of clothes that she wants like has the energy makes the decisions that she wants and she doesn't care like her her filter is no longer what do other people think what is anyone going to think about what i'm doing she doesn't even it doesn't even cross her fucking mind right she's just staying true to herself that's her guiding compass and so i feel like you know that's one of the benefits that happens when someone is then in charge of their sexual energy is how they show up in the world is completely driven from the inside rather than any kind of outer judgment or concern or impact of what anybody else might think. I am well on my way there. I can't say that I've fully arrived at this I don't give a shit about what anybody thinks about me. Um, (laughs) At least your breasts are a good distance there. Exactly, and it it's a journey, and I you know I'm I feel more decisive about um, what I'm wanting and being willing to speak up for what I what I want and to make the change in my wardrobe and to be able to make those changes. I am clunky and you know start and stop and um, hesitate on decisions, but. I'm, I'm headed that way, and I'm not scared of of the path that I'm on. Fantastic. So, as an additional, if you're into sharing this, like you also spoke about being developing more awareness of your vagina and how your menstrual cycles were shifting through owning more of your sexual energy. So that was another area where you noticed a shift. To be aware of my vagina was mind blowing. <laughs> and to to just be aware of that while I'm driving down the road or while I'm having a conversation or doing my work. And um, it got to the point where I was so lubricated, Kim, I had to change my underwear two or three times a day. Just, I, what is going on? I just was That's not amazing. used to this attention and this lubrication and, yeah. um, and even after having a baby, it's still, I, I still have wonderful lubrication and just, I, I'm so, so blessed and so thankful for that. And um, as far as my, my menstruation, it, it had just like my breast been something that I hide and don't let anybody know about. It's just, you <laughs> this weird girl thing that we hide. And... To, to be connected with my vagina while that's going on. It was just calm and uh, it's hard to explain how just beautiful it felt and so feminine to have a menstrual cycle and to be orgasmic through that and just feel 
that pleasure throughout the day and not be grossed out and trying to hide it and hiding who I am. That's beautiful. And I love this overall theme of you, like you've mentioned that word several times, hiding, right? Connection to the breast and the menstrual cycle. And that as you've owned and really occupied this energy is that that falls away and you start to embrace these things as part of being a woman, the beauty of being feminine and just owning beauty in general, right? Like that's part of, to me, the archetype of the feminine is really embracing the notion, the embodiment of beauty and wearing that as a, you know, part of your day-to-day life. And it sounds like you're doing that more and more. It's this weird fear of being beautiful. Um, yeah, what and is I, I know, I know I feel it and I've spoken with other women about it and we're afraid to be beautiful and to accept that we are actually beautiful and to believe that about ourselves. Um, so I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> But it's interesting because then you have, like I was talking about this in the podcast, is, you know, say women who go and buy some fake breasts and then they're really like shoving them in your face and like trying to like get your attention, you know, as though they have... I wouldn't see I don't really call that confidence it's more like desperation but they kind of it's almost like with the addition of this franken tits that they somehow think they feel beautiful now like they've managed to buy I, some beauty my my perception of that is they're trying to convince you to convince them that they're worthy or that they are beautiful because they don't believe it themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't have augmented themselves. If they believed that they were already beautiful, they wouldn't have gone through that and they wouldn't be trying to convince someone else that they're beautiful. I think it's so in your face because they want that feedback and, and they want you to believe it so much because they don't believe it themselves. That's a really good way to put it because it's like, when you're shoving them in your face that much, it's like you're, you're not, it's not for you, you know? Like, right. They're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it so that you know, somebody else notices and as you say, gives them exactly. validation for whatever, looking sexy or, you know, whatever. And I always say like beauty is earned you know, true beauty. Anyone can buy a nose and buy tits and buy their, a new face. That's very, you know, everyone's got the same face these days on Instagram, like, but you can't, <laughs> but you can't buy the feeling of feeling beautiful. And, you know, from the inside, you have to earn it. And to me, you earn it through going demon hunting and excavating your wounds and your traumas and your baggage, coming to a place where you fully own. And I think a big part of it is, you know, owning your sexual self because it's such a shunted, shamed, taboo part of ourselves and such an integral, important part of ourselves. And when you own that and go through and work through your own inner stuff, you pull that all together. And to me, that manifests as a kind of beauty and or as pure beauty. Beauty, right like the you can see that in people's faces when they have a clear energy and aura about them and they love themselves and that that radiates you know and that's palpable I hear stories all the time from women who've done this work with me and they just get male attention coming at them all over the place right like people run across the street to pick them up and ask them out on dates they're at the gas station filling up their car obviously not in glam mode you know like wearing sweats and a t-shirt right. like you know and so these, a couple of guys try to pick them up like right then in there and I hear that all the time and it's because they're bringing out that beauty from within it's not because they had these giant franken tits that were spilling out of their little tube top no they weren't wearing anything that was the least bit conventionally sexy or provocative except for their own beauty and sexual energy yeah that's something I hadn't really considered before we all well, so many of us see the result and we want the result, that beauty, that radiance, that, that feminine goddess. We, we want to be that, but we neglect the work that it takes to be that. Um, I, I see it in my work that people, they want the result that I have, but they don't know the work that I go through to get there. Um, so to, to apply that to to femininity and beauty and sexiness 
um, I'm, that's awesome. The, we, we've, it's, it's a task. We still have to work at it. I love that. Yeah. It, you, <laughs> it's not cheap. It's effort. That's right. It's not cheap. It's effort. That's a really good way to put it. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap up? What I really want to say is if there is anyone listening who has heard Kim speak on various other podcasts or this one um, has checked out her website and just had that spark in their chest that ooh, they want to do this and then they him and haw because they're they're scared and they're not ready to own it, do it jump in both feet. Um, when Kim tells you that you're going to see these results, she's not kidding. Um, when Kim says it's going to help your business, it does. It really does. It, um, my, my family life is better. My relationship with my husband is better. My relationship with my family is better. My relationship with myself is better. My business is better because of this work. And um, and taking these classes. You can listen to the podcast. You can find all of Kim's, or so much of Kim's work she puts out there for consumption. But when you take the course and you do the work and do you, you're regimented like Kim tells you to be, it's going to work and you're going to see these results. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that's really lovely. And I appreciate you giving that boost of encouragement to people who, like you say, might be hemming and hawing and not sure about going the full commitment into the work. And yeah, it's all earned, I see, folks. I see so many women trying to figure out what is feminine and how do you be feminine? And Kim's Kim's gonna help you. <laughs> this is this is an honest to goodness path to to owning your femininity. Beautiful. Thank you. So after listening to all of this, consider, do you walk around in life hunched over and hiding your chest or do you project your breasts and your heart and your openness out into the world? Try this for a day. Try it today. Remind yourself to consciously project your chest out of your body. How does it feel? How does it feel to be wearing that energy and what kind of differences do you notice in your body? So walk with your shoulders pressed back and erect. Breathe into your breasts and lead with them out into the world because you'll find that there's a big association with your heart energy and when you're crunched over and you're hiding the breasts or you've blocked them with silicon you will not be as much in touch with your heart it's just not possible open up put your chest out there and see how your whole perspective will change lead with your breasts the How to Be a Well-Fucked Woman Salon is opening soon. This is the How to Live and Love in a Female Body education you never had but ought to have had. I show you how to tap into your full sexual and orgasmic potential and own all parts of your sexual self. The salon includes breast massage and activation practices as well as learning how to channel your sexual energy into your life as a creative superpower. We'll dive into how to have all of the deeper, life-changing vaginal orgasms plus how to use sex acts as pathways to enlightenment like did you know that anal sex can bring you closer to god yeah that's the way that i talk and that's the kind of stuff we're diving into are you coming Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, subscribe and also leave a review and send someone else the gift of a healthy libido and an off the charts love life by sharing this episode with them. We'll be back next week. And in the meantime, many happy orgasms.